Good morning. For those of you joining us online, good morning to you as well. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be with you. God's peace with one another. Our service continues this morning on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to You all hearts are open, all desires known, and from You no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. See God's holy word. A reading from Samuel. King David ordered Job, Abishai, and Atai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man Abishai. And all of the people heard when the king gave orders to all the commanders concerning Abishai. So the army went on to the field and against Israel, and the battle was fought in the forest of Ephraim. The man of Israel, the men of Israel, were defeated by the servants of David, and the slaughter was great on that day. 20,000 men, the battle spread over the face of all the country, and the forest claimed more victims on that day than the sword. Absalom happened to meet the servants of David. Absalom was riding on his mule, and the mule went under the thick branches of the great oak. He had caught as fast of the oak, and was left hanging between heaven and earth, while the mule that was under him went on. The ten young men, Job armored bearers, surrounded Absalom and struck him and killed him. Then the Cushite came. The Cushite said, Good things for my lord the king, for the Lord has vindicated you this day, delivering you from the power of all the people, from all that rose up against you. The king said, to the Cushite. Is it well with the young men of Absalom? The Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up to do you harm be like the young man. The king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. As he went, he said, Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I Excuse me. Would I have died instead of you, O Absalom, my son, my son? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 130, verses 1 through 30, 1 through 7 found on page 784 in the Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletin. We will read it in unison. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. 
I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and to him there is and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Putting away falsehoods, let us ask us, speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths but only what is useful for building up, as there, is, as there is a need, so that the words may give grace to those who hear, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with the seal of the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, imitators of God as beloved children and in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. <laughs> Last week, we looked at our responsibility in sharing the truth of God's love for all. And following the example of Nathan, 
how important it was for us to do so in a loving and caring way. So that those who hear us can see for themselves the truth within the truth we share. Why do they need to see it for themselves? Why do they have to consider it truth? Because we have become a society in which we profess things as truth that really aren't. I'm not saying we become a society of prolific liars. It's just we no longer evaluate the truths we hear proclaimed. We accept what is said as truth because the source of the truths we hear is believed to be reliable. The problem is that these sources are not doing their own examinations before making bold claims of truth. And some are generalizing in such a way as any truth they speak is shadowed. Shadowed by the story they want to tell. And I'm not just talking about the news organizations or social media. While they are the cesspool of dis and misinformation, such inaccuracies in sharing of the truth can be found in the midst of the best of people, even here in the church. How is this possible? We're human. We may be skeptical about what others say, but when it comes to those who are closest to us, those who we speak, we think speak with an authority and expertise, there is a trust that blinds our, from us from seeing their humanity. Take, for instance, this sermon. When I first arrived here 13 years ago, you listened to my sermons with caution, asking yourself, did what I say match what you believed as truth? Or what you have heard others what you see as scholars say, or what you have thought of as truth. Eventually, I believe, I have earned your trust that what I share each week was the truth of God's love as found in Scripture and our recipients' responsibilities of that love, as I understand it. I'm thankful. I'm blessed by your trust. But it scares me as well, especially in light of the fact that we've also become a society that lives by the sound. That quick word that may have some truth but lack context. Like so many, I always figured this is a result of the cable news and social media. But it goes much farther back. In his letter to the Ephesians and to the Corinthians, Paul writes to encourage them to stand firm in the truth that he has shared with them and not to be swayed by the drifting self-proclaimed prophets who twist the truth to serve their own needs and egos. He acknowledges not all that professed them, Jesus Christ as Lord are like that. But he wants his readers to listen with caution to anyone who speaks from what they have thought or what they have heard from others and not from that which is revealed to them by the Holy Spirit. He goes on to remind them, they already know the truth. Not because he said it was truth, but because the Holy Spirit has already worked within them to help them know the truth that he has professed is real. At the heart of all truth, Paul says, is God's love. 
A love that seeks not to divide, but to unify us as one body in Christ. That is why he is so adamant in today's reading and his denunciation of falsehoods. He knows that they only divide. And he's not just talking about falsehoods that we know are false, but even those which we send out inadvertently. Those that are disguised as truth. Now Paul's observations may be one reason our presiding bishop is so fond of saying if it's not about love, it's not about Jesus. You see, out of love, Jesus spoke truth. Truth so that we, like David, might see for ourselves the truth love reveals and the hope it offers and seeing it, seeking in all aspects of our life. Easier said than done, isn't it? Yeah. To hear truth, especially truth that seems to run contrary to social norms, can create in us not the clean heart we long for, but a feeling of frustration and dismay. I'm sure that's how the people who heard Jesus felt when he said, I am the bread of life that you must consume. You see, they hear his words, not his truth. I believe what he is telling them is not to eat him in the literal sense but to let him into their hearts as they do food into their stomachs so that they may have life. Life filled not with the worries of the world, but an anxious expectation of what is yet to come. How do I know this? Something my old Testament professor once said. She said, Everything in the Bible is true. Not everything's a fact. See, she told us how in the Old Testament they often use stories to bring the truth to life. And then she turned around and showed us how this Old Testament practice was what Jesus did in his parables. His parables, his stories. We're meant to make people think. To draw their own conclusions of what is right and wrong. Truth and falsehood. It worked then, and it still works today. We, like those who heard Jesus speak, still wrestle with the meaning of his parables. Yes, we have centuries of passed down wisdom regarding the truth behind the stories he told. But like so many truths, even these can become twisted. How, you might ask? How many of us here have ever played the game telephone? Oh, I see the smiles. You know the game. Somebody whispers a sentence or a story in one person's ear, and it goes to another, and to another, and to another. And by the time it reaches the end of that human chain, the story that they tell has no resemblance, if at all, to the original story told. Now, something people don't think about is at any point in the midst of that game, the person who's heard the story can get up and go talk to the person and say, is this what you really said? But we don't do that. It's not part of the game. We like to see what it morphs into. But we, it's also because we trust that person who is telling us what was said. We believe they are telling us truth. 
Can you see where this could get us in trouble? So how do we avoid the pitfalls falsehoods prevent, present? Intentional or inadvertent? We need to do a little research. If I say in my sermon, Paul said this, Jesus said that, go look it up for yourself. See if my understanding is what you come away from understanding when you've read it. And if they're different, come see me. Come talk to me. I'm human. I could have easily misunderstood as well as the next person. See, that's one reason I participate in a small group Bible study. If I am to share with you what I believe to be the truth about God's love, then I must do a little research. Don't get me wrong. Commentaries are great, and I use several of them to hear different voices of those who have studied and prayed and researched the Scriptures. But to actually hear, to hear another's voice, their point of view of what they found in their research, in their understanding, helps me build the story I will share that highlights a truth Scripture reveals. Now here's something to consider. Something else my Old Testament professor once said. Within Scripture, there are many truths. And out of these truths, there are many applications. Still, for me, my understanding at the heart of all truth is the truth of God's love for us. And God's desire that we would enjoy for an eternity the relationships and blessings such love offers. John's gospel account, his collection of stories in context, I believe is all about the depth of God's love. And in today's reading, the fact that we need to know it. Letting it fill us to overflowing. Therefore, transforming us from being worried about the things of this world and anxious and excited about the things of the next. To know love. Love that has the power to do all this. Jesus says, we need to know him. And one truth I believe the whole of the New Testament tells us is that we need Jesus. We need to know the truth of God's love. The greatness, the wonder, the majesty of a love that does not have an end. That overfills our cups that is not meant for only those within the four walls of this building, but for everyone that is around us. If we are to be the bearers of that truth, then it behooves us to know that truth ourselves. Not only through what we are told, but through the revelation found in the research that we do. Research that is guided, if we allow it, by the Holy Spirit who is, Jesus says, leads us to all truth. If you are hearing this today, whether you are here in the sanctuary or with us online, if you do not regularly read the scriptures, seeking truth and understanding, and then discussing what you have read with someone else, then I invite you to begin now. If you don't know someone with whom to talk, why not join me? 
and preferably the Holy Spirit. In mid-September, on Wednesday mornings, in the parish hall, to read and study the scriptures for the coming Sunday. Who knows what truths we might discover as we do. Amen. Continuing on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He was suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. He wrote with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of the world, for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Prayers of the People are Form 4, found on page 388 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and the world. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, pray for the Church of South India united. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, pray for St. Mark's on the campus, Lincoln, the Reverend Chuck Peake, all students and teachers. In the DR, pray for the Holy Name Church, the Grand Commission Church, St. Gabriel Church. In the parish cycle of prayer, pray for the youth of our parish. Grant Almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth and live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our President Joe Biden, our Governor Pete Ricketts, and the elected officials of the communities in which we live. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Scott, our bishop, and Tom, our priest. Guide them and the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, Bless all li whose lives are closely linked with ours. We remember today those who serve our country at home and abroad, especially those who are deployed. 
Sarah F. And are there others? Those who travel. Are there any? Those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Alyssa W., Daniel W., Jocelyn A., Karen B., Brant B., Olivia H., Todd P., Michael S., AJ P., are there others? Those celebrating anniversaries this week, Phil and Sandy S., Joe and Pat S., are there others? Lord, grant that we may serve Christ in them. And love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we lift those in our congregation and those we know who are ill. Especially Merle P., Lonnie E., Alyssa C., Della L., Megan, Jeff W. Are there others? We also pray for those with special concerns, especially Hank A., the Peterson family, the Austin family, Rick S., Mark T., Francis, Beth F., K., Jim R., Bob G. Are there others? Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died. Are there any? That your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Almighty God, whose will it is to hold both heaven and earth in the peace of your kingdom, give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, peace in our hearts. All this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. Our offertory hymn today is hymn number 193, and I believe we are only doing verses 1 through 3.
Our service today continues with Eucharistic Prayer C, found on page 369 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island, home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal element, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through the prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. So, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, <clears throat> said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection. <clears throat> we await his day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of its bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day 
daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
our post communion hymn is hymn number 490, found in the blue 1982 hymn. Continuing on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son, and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to give to you and to the Holy Spirit beyond glory, now and forever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. Well, as you probably noticed, looking in the back of your bulletin, it's another week of lots of announcements. Um, as our program year begins next, oh, actually, in just another couple of weeks, um, you're going to see a lot more of these announcements letting you know things that are happening. I do want to point out that we do have the calendar in our annual report. Uh, we always publicize things, but I also want you to know that the vestry is looking at each of the events that we have planned, each of the uh, activities we have planned as a parish um, each month to look and make sure that we are going to be safe in what we're doing and how we're doing it. So um, I do want to point that out. Um, the other thing I want to bring up and uh, point out right away in, in the announcements is masks. Um, I know that's a dirty word for some people. 
Um, the diocese is not yet mandating it, but they have gone and said they strongly encourage it. They are leaving it up to the parish leadership at this time. Our vestry will be talking this week during meeting about mask wearing here in our midst for both vaccinated and unvaccinated. Uh, please be patient with us and understand that we are trying to do our best to keep everyone safe and feeling safe in worship. So if masks come back, which they could is if the numbers do not come down, please be with us and give us a little bit of grace. Thank you. The DO book study, DOK book study continues. Um, one thing I forgot to put in the Holy Land study announcement is that there is no class this week. We will be looking at Capernaum a week from now on the 19th. Uh, because of vestry meeting, I can't do two things at once. So uh, next Sunday is Christopher training. We also have our open house, Sunday school open house next weekend. And our journeys program begins in just two weeks on Wednesday the 18th. Um, for parents of our youth that are, are coming to journeys this year, we invite you to join them for this first night because we are going to be talking about the program year ahead, um, things that we want to do, and um, it's, I think it's very important that the first night of the year, at least parents, one parent is able to participate um, if able. Parish picnic, two weeks away. Weather permitting, we're going to try to put up some tents outside and hold it outside so it doesn't feel like a big coffee hour. But um, if it looks like we're going to be in the 90s and the sun's going to be shining, we're probably going to stay inside with the air conditioning. I do need to get a couple of volunteers who during that service day uh, would be willing to be downstairs cooking some hamburgers and some hot dogs so that when we come down, we don't have to wait too long for the entree part of the meal. And in here it asks different families, last name, figure out either dessert or side. The other thing I want to point out in here is there's, it says in the bulletin, um, through the generosity of a couple of families, um, we have received a new 10-foot cross that will be installed on the roof once our new roof is in <laughs> um, to replace the one that is up there and is starting to um, show significant signs of wear and tear. Um, it's been up there for a lot of years, and uh, the new one should last us much longer. Uh, and I want to thank the families that, that did that. Um, there's other things that I wanted to talk about today, but I cannot remember what they are. I did not write them down. Why was that so funny? <laughs> yes, it does. I know. Uh, <laughs> Um, oh, I do want to do birthdays and anniversaries. I am looking down the list. Uh, Melissa, Daniel, Jocelyn, Karen. I don't see anybody listed with a birthday. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries that did not make it into the bulletin? Um, for those that may be watching us online, would you join me in the birthday prayer? Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on these your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we do have a couple anniversaries, Phil and Sandy. And Joe and Pat are celebrating 61 years this week. Yes, please. Are there any other anniversaries that are not in the bulletin? Would you all please join me in the anniversary prayer for this wonderful couple? O oh, gracious and ever-living God, look mercifully on those who join together. Grant them your blessing, assist them with your grace, that with fidelity and steadfast love they may honor and keep their promises and vows. Through Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our going forth hymn is hymn number 530, found in the blue 1982 hymnal. Please stand.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs>